Both of these mowers you see sitting in front of us are mowers that we've already completely reviewed, both of them, the Milwaukee and the Ryobi. So be sure to check out those individual reviews, but which one is a better fit for you or is either one a good fit for you? Let's dig in and find out. On the right, we have the Milwaukee M18 Fuel, M18 with a big asterisk beside it. We'll get into that in just a moment. Anyway, it's the M18 Fuel 2823 21-inch self-propelled mower. Now, over here on the left, we have the Ryobi RY401021, and this is the 21-inch self-propelled mower all-wheel drive. While these units do have a lot of features in common, there are a lot of differences as well, and that's what we're going to get into. So let's go. Now, as I mentioned, both of these are 21 inch cut or 21 inch decks. Uh, they run a 21 inch blade. However, there are quite a bit of difference in between the two just on those features. So let's go ahead and fold these up. So right off the bat, if you're actually seeing this in person, very easy to see, we have a plastic deck here. We have a metal deck on the Milwaukee. So the Ryobi, we get the plastic deck, although it is reinforced, so you don't have a lot of twist here, uh, but the Milwaukee does have a stamp steel deck. Both of these are 21 inch cuts, have 21 inch blades. Uh, the Ryobi uses their cross cut blade, which is supposed to be better for mulching and uh, Milwaukee is just using a single blade, which that is the regular lift blade. They also offer a high lift blade as well. Also, while we have these up on the all wheel drive mower, you see the front drivetrain here. So we have another electric motor that's driving this shaft that drives both of these front wheels. So all wheel drive motor here and Milwaukee is just your standard uh, rear wheel driven self-propelled unit. So the front wheels are going to uh, free spin. Now, both of these units include a bagging system where the bag is obviously going to hang off the backside. In fact, they're very uh, alike when it comes to that on the, on the bagging. Uh, they also have a mulching plug that's going to plug into the hole in the rear. And this plug is built in. We'll go over that in one second as well as they'll have a side discharge, which they're quite a bit different on their side discharge. And again, we'll go over that here in one moment. But both mowers include all three options. Now installing the bags on both of these units is very easy. Uh, just lift up the back here. You can see it's spring loaded. Take the bag and these hooks here, these metal hooks are gonna hang right here on the metal bar across there. So very easy just to set it in there. The Ryobi, a little bit different, but pretty much the same. Uh, you've got the metal hooks right here, and they're going to hang on these plastic hooks right here on the rear of the mower. But just set it there, let the lid spring-loaded close on it, and now you're ready to bag. Now, one thing to consider before you put your bag on is to make sure we have our opening here. Whereas on the Ryobi, we don't have a plug that goes in there, but you see this door right here. Well, that is operated by their mulching door. So I have a little joystick right here. I'm gonna lift up on the handle. And when I slide it over, you see it opens up that door. So now it's gonna allow that grass, those grass clippings to exit into the bag. So make sure our door is open and then we can hang our bag and we're ready to go. On the Milwaukee, pull this out and you can see obviously our plug is out of there. We don't have a door on there. We've actually got a plug. And here's our mulching plug. So we've got a little handle back here and it just slides right in. And that's all we do. And the spring loaded door basically keeps that plug in place. You can see there's a little ring right here that meets up with that handle and holds that into place. So nothing to have to clip on, no clips to clip in or anything else. It just slides in there and then you close that down and we're good to go. Now here's the mulching door handle and this is a really cool idea However, the use of it is a little bit, I don't know if you want to call it janky or uh, it just, does, it's not as smooth as I think it should be. And I think that's after you use it and I think some grass gets in the slot in there, but it's not hard to do. You just have to kind of wiggle it back sometimes, uh, but it usually goes into bagging pretty easy. But when we go back to mulching, it's not just one smooth pull. It's just kind of a wiggle it over and then it works fine. I'm trying to work around the camera here. If I actually get over here, it's actually easier to do when I'm showing, 
but again just wanted to point that out it's just not as smooth as you would think that it might would be so that mulching door is cool but it does take a little bit of an effort to uh, to get that over into place now again moving it into bagging easy to do you pull up on the lock slide it over and it locks into place now setting up the side discharge is quite a bit different on these two as well this is pretty typical the ryobi is pretty typical when it comes to uh to battery powered mowers just got a little side discharge chute and it just kind of sits in there and as it closes these little hooks close in those holes right there so pretty very easy to do and then that holds it in place so that's all we have to do so as long as we have our rear plug in and we have our side discharge on now we're going to side discharge all the grass clippings now the milwaukee uses a different system that i wasn't too sure about initially but after using it i actually love it so right here same kind of idea is that between these two arrows are going to go in between the two arrows that you'll see here looking down easy to line those up that little tongue goes under the chrome bar there close the top and now that's locked in so now our side discharge actually goes off the left side of the mower now here's why i love the Milwaukee design. So now we're looking down the right hand side of the Ryobi, the left hand side of the Milwaukee, and we see the chute sticking out the side of the Ryobi. Now that's not a problem if we're mowing along a fence and we've got the left side of the mower along the fence. It is a problem if we're trying to mow up against something here on the right hand side because now we have that chute sticking out several inches past the wheels. I know that's not a huge issue, but especially as a pro, commercial, whatever, you don't want to have to stop, turn around. If you're having to mow around uh, multiple obstacles, the Milwaukee gives you that ability because now your left hand uh, shoot is shooting out the left hand side, but it's not sticking outside the mower. I can run right up beside the left hand side. I can run right up beside the right hand side and mow right up against fences, sidewalks, whatever it may be without having to turn around or without having to change my chute or go into mulching or anything else. Now, both of these are 36 volt mowers, but they both handle the battery operation completely different. And you say, well, Tim, this is an M18 fuel and that's a 40 volt HP. That's a 40 volt mower and this is an 18 volt mower. No, that's not the case because the M18, the Milwaukee uses both of these batteries. It requires both batteries to be in the ports in order for this to operate because it's running on 36 volts. It's using both batteries at once in series to create that 36 volts. Now, what about the 40 volt? Well, let's talk about that. The 40 volts in here is not really a 40 volt battery. Yes, when you charge it all the way up and you measure it, you will get 40 volts. But nominal voltage, in other words, most of the time when it's running, once it kind of takes the top off of uh, a full charge, it's gonna run at 36 volts or thereabouts 36 volts. So it's really a 36 volt battery and running as a 36 volt mower. And the Milwaukee is using two 18s at 36 volts. So they're both 36 volt mowers. However, while the Milwaukee requires both batteries in because obviously it needs those in series to create 36 volts, the Ryobi can run on just one battery. And as long as our key is pointing in the right direction, it will run with no problem. It will self-propel, it will cut, it will do everything because we're creating 36 volts on one battery. So that does have a little bit of a benefit to be able to run on one battery if you have to, and you could be charging the other one. Whereas the Milwaukee, you would need extra batteries if you, they died and you needed to keep going. So again, the Ryobi will run on one battery, the Milwaukee requires two. And to switch the batteries on the Ryobi, both ports are actually active, so we don't have to swap them out. All we do, we have a key here with an arrow on it. This is pointing to this battery, so that's the one it's running on right now. I can flip it around, and now it's pointing to that battery, and this will be the active battery now that it's going to use to power the mower. So once one battery dies, take the key out, switch it around, and now you can keep going. And the cool thing is, I don't have to lift this up to check the batteries. Obviously, I can do that, but right here, we have a gauge right there. If I turn the mower on, we can see the battery gauge right here telling us how much charge is in there. Now, the same way on the Milwaukee, if I try to power it up, you can see we get a fuel gauge there right through the back of the motor to tell us how much power is left in those batteries, and those will die at the same time. 
both those batteries will get discharged at the same time at the same amount. Now something else to notice as the mowers come or as you get them in the kit, the Milwaukee comes with an 18 volt, 12 amp hour battery, two of these. It comes with a two HD, so you get your high output HD 12.0 batteries. So 12 amp hours at 18 volts. And on the 40 volt lithium, you get the six amp hour at 36 volts. Again, not at 40 volts, but six amp hours at 36 volts. But so basically you're getting the same capacity in these two batteries and we're running two of these we're running two of these uh, the good thing is with the ryobi you can actually go to a 12 amp hour ryobi that is the exact same size as the six amp hour they have the new 21700 cells in them so out of the same size pack you can double your runtime yes you'll have to pay for it yes you'll have to buy the batteries but there is that capability if you wanted to mow a larger yard you could upgrade these to 12 amp hour or even the 8 amp hour and have more running time with the same size batteries. Now the deck height adjustment on these to actually raise and lower the cutting height is very easy, very simple, and uh, works the same way. So we have seven different positions here with one hand, pull this out, lift it all the way up, put it all the way down. So very easy to change those positions. And I think the cutting height is somewhere between an inch to four and a half inches on both of these. And they change just a little bit depending on, you know, where the blade is in the deck and so forth. But that's pretty much gives you an idea of your different adjustments. So between one and seven, you have a difference of about three and a half inches. So you're getting about a half inch uh, for each increment here. And as I mentioned, it's just as easy on the Milwaukee. Just flip this over, raise it up to where you want to. And it sits in there but it raises the whole, whole mower without having to go to the different wheels and adjust them. Now the Ryobi has the easiest handle to operate, both uh, raise it up and down as well as fold it forward. And you can see this uh, plastic pin right here. It'll raise up and go to a second notch. So you got two different notches as far as height of the handle. But if I wanna fold it forward, here's the ease of actually moving that pin. There's a handle right here and it says handle release and you can raise it this way or once it's folded down, and I'll show you in a moment, you can also pull it this way, and that's what activates that pin, and it's so easy to use. So the handle's in the mowing position, and I can just grab this, pull it up, flip it over, and now it's locked in. Pick up the mower, and stand it up. Same way, once it's back down, I don't have to push that handle forward. As I mentioned, it works both ways. I can pull it up like this, Fold it back, it locks into place, and I'm ready to go. So very easy to fold that handle and adjust the handle. Now getting to handle ergonomics, uh, things change a little bit for the Ryobi. Not that it's hard and not that it's bad, it's just, I would say, not as good as the Milwaukee, and we'll go there in just one moment. So we got a rubber overmolded handle here that's not uncomfortable to hold at all, but we do have to pull the safety ring back, and once we do that, we're kind of grasping two things. You know, we're holding this ring in place, uh, but you actually obviously feel that because it's laying against your nice, smooth, ergonomic handle, right? So you're holding that as well as you're having to hold uh, your throttle down. So this is what it actually engages the motor, the self-propelled mo motor. So as long as I have the ring pulled back and I push this, that's going to activate the mower to actually start rolling. Now to actually turn the blades on, I have to actually push this handle and it will start the mower up. And that's another thing we'll cover in just a moment. You'll hear, once I push this on, one, two, three, four. So about four and a half, five seconds before we hear that blade pick up all the way up to its running RPM. Again, let us get back to that in one moment. But anyway, as far as holding this handle, it is, it's not cumbersome at all, but you do feel two things in your hand. You feel the handle and you feel this uh, safety ring, whatever this thing is called, that you have to hold the whole time. So you've got that feeling in your hand. And then when it comes to operating uh, the throttle control here, um, it, it's just, it doesn't have a great feel. It's a little bit kind of flimsy. Uh, the cool thing is you do have some adjustment here so we can pull this back and adjust this if we wanna operate it with our thumbs or if you wanna raise it back up and we just kinda of wanna run it with our palms of our hands. So it does give you some options on how you want to activate this. 
it just doesn't have the best feel. I've said that about five times now. I'm sorry about that. I just can't find some better words and able to explain that. But it's just once you uh, once you use this, you'll understand what we're talking about. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's just a not as good thing. Now over here on the Milwaukee, we've got something different happening. So we have obviously some plastic uh, glass reinforced handle here with some rubber over molding that's not too uncomfortable to hold, but we feel kind of this recession here to when we're holding it. Again, it kind of has a funny feel to it. However, what this is meant for, which I think you can see already, is when we pull that safety ring back, it kind of makes this a kind of almost a one piece feel uh, handle. Now, again, you can feel this, but it's not nearly as intrusive as on the Ryobi. So they definitely put a lot of thought into making that little recession there to, again, make this more of an oval shaped or uh, at least a round shaped handle that's not very uncomfortable to hold whatsoever. Now, we also kind of have the same idea of controls uh, with the Milwaukee as well. However, it's got a completely different feel. Uh, it's much more comfortable to hold. We get rubber over molding up here and we can operate this with our thumb, either thumb or again with the palm of our hand. If we just kind of rest here and push it with the palm of our hand, we can do that as well. So when it comes down to handle ergonomics, we're definitely gonna have to give that to the Milwaukee, just a better feel and a little bit more sturdy of a feel, but both of them operate just fine. Now, as far as LEDs goes, both of these mowers have LED headlights. And people ask me all the time, well, who's gonna use LED headlights? And I will tell you in Florida, they get used all the time because when it's 95 degrees uh, by noontime, then uh, it's definitely something that you'd love to do in the dusk or actually after hours. And let's face it, with a, with a battery powered mower, you're not gonna upset people by running a, like you would a gas engine at 10 o'clock at night or uh, five o'clock in the morning. So it does give you the ability to use these in the darker times of the day. And they do get used that way, by the way. Now on the Ryobi, as soon as you start up the unit, you're going to get lights. So you can see now our LED lights are on and they're shining. So that's always going to, as long as the mower is run, running or as long as the mower is activated, those headlights are gonna come on. One thing people ask all the time, well, can you shut those off on the Ryobi? No, you cannot. However, those are probably burning such little juice, you wouldn't recognize it if you had all that juice back in the battery to finish your job. You just wouldn't, wouldn't notice, it's just not burning enough. But the point is, you cannot turn it off on the Ryobi. If the mower's activated, they're on. Now on the Milwaukee, you can see I've activated the mower and the lights are not on. However, if I hit the headlight button, now they're on and you see we get two headlights here and then we get these two side lights on the side of the mower as well and they work very well. I would say that the Milwaukee lights work better than the Ryobi lights and as you can see, I raise this up a bit. Now you can see those lights there on the side of the Milwaukee in addition to the headlights. And again, for such small LED lights, they work very well for mowing. They, they light up a nice patch of grass for you to mow. Now, another small difference between these two is when you're going to lift these in, whether you're gonna lift them in your truck, whether you're gonna lift them uh, in your house, on your porch, in your shed, whatever it may be. The Ryobi, you have a rear handle back here that's easy to grasp. However, there's no handle up here. I guess you could grab it here under the motor head. I don't know if they uh, say that's a good idea or not, but Otherwise, you would be reaching under the deck to actually grab that, which that's really not the cutting de deck. The cutting deck ends about right here, but still putting your hands underneath the mower, especially with the batteries in it, probably not a smart thing to do. On the Milwaukee, we have a rear handle here and we have a front handle here. So you can lift up the mower very easily, whether it's folded up or not, makes it very easy to carry that mower. Okay, now let's talk a little about performance. Now the Ryobi offers you some different speeds as to how fast you want it to propel. And so does the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee says like five different speeds, but there's actually a dial that you can variably set wherever you want to. But if I set them both to max speed, let's see here the difference in between the two. So I've got them both set to max. 
and you see how quickly the Milwaukee pulls out in front of the Ryobi. It's just no match whatsoever. I'll do it again. You'll see they'll both start at the same time. It's not like I'm starting one and then the other, but just the Milwaukee. And I'm not doing any push whatsoever. I'm just activating the throttles and letting them go. And if you'll watch my reviews on both of these mowers, I made the point of both of those. I, I said that the Ryobi runs a little bit slower than I can walk and the Milwaukee will actually run a little bit faster than what is comfortable for me to walk. For me to keep up with this wide open is a very, very fast, brisk walk. Whereas the Ryobi, I'm wanting to push it, if you will. And talking about push, that gets me into another topic that's sort of a pet peeve of mine, but let's talk about it. So we know this Ryobi is a self-propelled unit. It's an all-wheel drive self-propelled unit, but I will tell you this is the same way on their rear-wheel drive self-propelled unit as well. If I'm just pushing this mower, so if I'm just pushing it, so when you get around uh, trees and you get around obstacles, sometimes you just want to push it, back it up, push it, back it up, push it, just kind of work yourself around those obstacles. And with this one, you're fighting against the self-propelled mo motors. You can actually hear them churning as you're pushing it which is pretty typical on an electric or battery powered self-propelled units. When you roll it, it's rolling against those motors. So you feel a little bit of friction that you're pushing against and you don't have an option to free that up. Now, when it comes to the Milwaukee, it has some sort of clutch that disengages when it's not operating and it's much, much easier to roll. Even though you got that big steel deck there, it's very easy to roll this mower and you're, you're not pushing against those self-propelled motors. Now here's something else that really stands out between these two. I kind of mentioned it in my opening, but just how quickly the Milwaukee turns up the blade speeds. First, let's do the Ryobi. So I'm gonna activate the blades on the Ryobi. So I'm gonna pull the handle in and then push this button and we're gonna count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. So at least four seconds for it to get all the way up to speed. Now let's watch this on the Milwaukee. I'm gonna push the button, and when I pull this handle back, 1,001. So in less than one second, we've got full speed. Again, I'll do it again. You see it ramps all the way up and then it kind of governs itself back down, but it reaches full speed in about a second or maybe even a little less than a second. Ryobi also has the all-wheel drive feature. It's an all-wheel drive mower, but you don't have to have it in all-wheel drive. You can have it in rear-wheel drive, or you can engage the all-wheel drive where all four wheels are pulling. Now on the Milwaukee, we have, there's our light button there where we can turn the headlights on and turn the headlights off. And there's a blade button right here. Well, that's not doing anything. You don't hear anything happen, but let me show you. So I'm gonna activate the blades. So you see it's kind of calmed down, kind of at a slow speed. So basically when you have it in the normal operating mode, it's going to govern itself. When it gets in a thicker grass, it's going to speed up. And when you're not in the thicker grass, it's going to calm back down. If, you're, if you don't want to wait on that to happen and you want just kind of max performance, you can turn that on. It's going to keep the blades at high speed. Obviously you're going to burn more batteries, but you do have that option if you're in thicker grass and you know you need it, turn it on and go at it. So when it comes to actually mowing power, uh, the ability to actually you know, knock down grass and, and cut it all in one swoop, probably have to give it to the Milwaukee, but let's go ahead and see. Now this kind of testing is kind of absurd, if you will, uh, but it does give you an idea of how much power some of these mowers develop. As you can see, these weeds and grass are almost at my waist. They're well above my knees, up kind of mid-thigh height. Uh, so let's see how well the Ryobi will do. I'm gonna put it in all-wheel drive. Put it in all-wheel drive, see if it does better.
that did very well in that junk. You heard a little bit of a bog, but not much whatsoever. And I will tell you the, the all wheel drive helped tremendously when I turned that on. Okay, now let's run the Milwaukee. All right, finally, let's talk about runtime or how much will these mow if you're mowing just regular lawns, if you will. Well, that's a good point. And by the way, we're going to talk about pricing and warranty and also chargers. But we're looking at cutting capacity and not so much as deck width and height and all that. But as far as how much will they mow? And with the Milwaukee, we got a little over a half an acre when we tested it. When we tested the Ryobi, we got five eighths of an acre. So almost the same amount. Well, it's running the same size batteries. Again, we mentioned that you got two 18 volt, 12 amp hour batteries. Here we have two six amp hour, 36 volt batteries. When you do that calculation, you get the same amount of watt hours out. The problem with the Milwaukee is that's pretty much capped at runtime because that's the largest battery they offer is a 12 amp hour. Ryobi also offers a 12 amp hour, but that's double because they're already at 36 volts or 40 volts max. So you're going to get longer run time if you want to step up to the eight amp hour or 12 amp hour batteries in this. Otherwise, with the batteries we have in here, the six amp hour on the 40 volt and the 12 amp hour on the 18 volt, you're looking at about five eighths of an acre. Now that's larger than most of your stamped lawns here in the US. Most of those are quarter to a third acre. So you're gonna handle that with no problem. Now, if you're a professional in the business and you're mowing a lot of yards, that could now be an issue to you. So the only option is to battery up get you some more batteries put them in the cycle and the nice thing is that's where the chargers come into play now with the milwaukee kit you're going to get the dual rapid charger now this is over 600 watts out and it will charge both batteries at the same time so you're looking at charging the both of these batteries in about an hour and then you're back going or they're back fully charged again so probably four batteries will keep you in the loop and keeping this mower going that's if it's being used all the time. Now, when you look at the Ryobi, you get a 295 watt charger and it's only going to charge one battery. Well, roughly that's charging about the same amount because you're only charging one battery at 300 watts rather than two batteries at 600 watts. And the fact that you can run this mower on one battery. So it's really not required for you to have a dual bay charger. However, Ryobi does offer a 40 volt dual bay charger that would help you out even more. And it's right at 600 watts. I think it's 590 watts out. However, this is the one that actually comes with the mower. So I would kind of call that a wash, even though it's probably a better idea to have you a dual bay charger just because you can charge multiple batteries at once. Now let's talk about warranty. Warranty are basically the same on both of these. You get a three year warranty on both of these tools or both of these mowers. And I believe they also warranty the batteries at either two or three years as well. I believe it's three years. But anyway, three years warranty on the mower on both the Ryobi and the Milwaukee. Pricing on the Milwaukee, most of the time you find it at 1099, so 1100 bucks. And that's for the kit that comes with the mower, that comes with the two 12 amp hour, 18 volt batteries and the dual bay rapid charger. 
Now on the Ryobi side, the all-wheel drive Whisper series, you're going to pick that up for about $799, so about $800. Bucks. So $800 versus $1,100. There's a $300 difference there. Is it worth it to you? Well, I would say on the performance side, the, the Milwaukee's definitely got a little better there. Even on the ergonomics, probably a little better there as well. There's a couple of features that the Ryobi has, like all-wheel drive. If you're doing a lot of undulations, things like that, that may be more beneficial to you. Also, the ability to turn it in and out of all-wheel drive is another benefit. Now, I love the fact that on the Milwaukee, we don't have that sense of pushing against those electric motors or pushing against that self-propelled system when you're just pushing the mower, whereas on the Ryobi, you are pushing against it. That's just kind of almost a pet peeve thing. Uh, but as far as the rigidity in the deck itself, definitely the Milwaukee's going to have the advantage there. And a couple other things to mention, people have asked, can you get replacement blades on the cross-cut mower? So you'll see when you see the Ryobi mowers, they have a whole long line of different mowers. But on the 21-inch cross-cut mowers, they recommend you only run a cross-cut blade. In fact, they use kind of a different pattern anyway where it bolts on. The replacement blade on that is going to run you about $45. Now on the Milwaukee, it uses a single blade system. That replacement blade is going to run you $25. And if you want the high lift blade, it's going to run you $29.95 or about $30. Bucks. So there are replacement blades available for both of these. Also, one thing I noticed on the Milwaukee, you can buy kind of a complete Milwaukee kit where it comes with the mower, with the dual bay charger, the two 12 amp hour batteries, another additional multi-volt uh, rapid charger. So it'll charge uh, M12 batteries as well as M18 batteries and another eight amp hour high output battery, as well as the quick lock power head, the M18 fuel power head, the M18 or the quick lock string trimmer, the quick lock chainsaw or pole saw, the quick lock hedge trimmer, all of that included in the kit and the, and the quick lock edger. So all of that in the kit for like 1600 bucks. So if you're looking to kind of go all in on Milwaukee cordless power as far as lawn equipment goes, that could be a great option to you as well. Now it really comes down to what are you looking for and I would definitely recommend put your hands on these units. You should be able to find them in your big box stores and be able to kind of put your hands on them and feel them and probably just by looking at these features and kind of understanding the pricing, you're going to make a determination anyway of what you're wanting and I would say that probably neither one of these are going to let you down. They're great units. Uh, they're very powerful in what they do. You should not be mowing in the stuff that we're doing right here. That was just kind of show you of what kind of stuff they can tackle. But I always tell people, if you want a battery powered mower, make sure you're using it on a maintained yard. If you're looking to, you know, knock down weeds all the time and it to be a brush cutter, this is not the unit for you. This is meant to mow to typical household lawns to keep them maintained and not to be a bushwhacker. As I mentioned before, we have fully reviewed both of these units, both in runtime, performance, everything else. So if you want to watch both of those videos, you can. We'll have links in the description. Hey, if you don't mind, would you keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok? And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated this video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.